the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Oh, thanks. In this parable of today's Mass of August 21st, Feast of St. Jane, Francis de Chantal, she was a sister under St. Francis de Sale, and he started the visitation nuns. And so they would, they did some apostolate, taking care of the sick, some teaching, but uh, mixed with the contemplative life. So how our world needs armies of nuns and monks and brothers and priests to reconvert this bad world back to Christ the King. St. Francis de Sales, he shines in numerous, many, many virtues. You should read his works. His famous works are Introduction to Devout Life, and the treatise on the love of God is a big treasure, and it's a, it's a two-volume work, but very profitable to go through slowly and pray over. A few gems from St. Francis de Sales, one of them is, throughout the day, offer short prayers to God. Stay in union with God by just throughout the day in your heart. You say to God, my God, I love thee, help me love thee more. Or when tempted to whatever sins, you would say, precious blood of Jesus, be my shield. Immaculate Heart of Mary, pray for me. Saint Philomena, Saint Maria Goretti, patroness of chastity and purity, pray for me. So these little things, he, he puts it this way, in winter, you don't want the fire to die out completely, because you gotta start it all over again in the fireplace. But during the winter, you just keep a few logs on the fire throughout the day. It's not a raging fire, but it's just enough to keep the flame going and keep the house, keep the chill off. And then at night, you really load it more and warm the house for the night. So he says, during the day, you want to put logs on the fire, that is, acts of love of God. Stay united with God. Pray to God. And we don't live like pagans who just think of God at Mass. Think of God when you're praying the Rosary and don't think of Him any, anywhere else. And you gentlemen have seen some beautiful things already. Beautiful uh, palm trees, beautiful crazy birds, a huge parrot full of colors. Uh, animals, fish, jellyfish even, oh, the ocean, the, the Gulf of Mexico, all this should shout to you the glory of God. You should see God in all his works, in his works in God. That was the spirit of St. Francis de Sale. Another one of his golden words is, of course everyone knows this one, you attract more flies from with one drop of honey than a thousand gallons of vinegar. Meaning, be kind with people, be gentle with people, don't be prone to anger, and don't blow up uh, in rages easily. St. Francis de Sales and St. Vincent de Paul, they both said it took over 20 years to control their anger. So we wanna, but that's just anger, but we, have, we all have passions and disorders in our soul that we all have to work on. And what do I confess the most? That's what would I need to work on the most. And we should go frequently to confession. Here on this trip, you have confession available <laughs> every day or any time of the day. So it should be a normal practice to go frequently to confession, at least weekly, when you have it available like this. And because there's many people out there who would love to go to confession, but don't see a priest for many, many months and even years. So, um, St. Francis de Sales, he, he, meant, he, he meant anger, but we all have to work on all our passions, whatever disorder in us, we have to cut those wild branches and pull up those weeds in our soul. Because if you don't pluck them out early, they take root and, you, and, a, and a man becomes slaves to sin. So we need to pray for the grace to uproot sins. Another one from St. Francis de Sale is, you send more souls to, better to send a soul to purgatory through gentleness than to send them to hell by severity. 
Better to send souls to purgatory by gentleness than to send them to hell by, by severity. What does that mean? He means, for example, dealing with people, dealing with uh, souls. For example, in a school, uh, what is better, to get in a huge rage and beat the kid and yell at him and humiliate him or to gently win his heart, get him to realize what he did was wrong, confess what he's wrong, admit it, and see what he needs to work on it in a more uh, manly and gentle way. You'll accomplish more by doing that than, and if, and if he dies and goes to purgatory, that's better than if someone blows up and they lose, they lose faith, they lose the faith. Like what happened to in Yugoslavia, there was a priest who was saying mass, and the altar boy presented the cruets, and the altar boy, being all alone, he was a little nervous, and he dropped the cruets, and the cruets fell on the marble floor in the church, made a loud crash, and the churches in those days, of course, were full. This was in the 40s or 50s, and so that was enough embarrassment as it was, but then the priest did what a priest should never do. He yelled at him and he said, get off the altar now, and I never want to see you back here again. Well, that boy never did come back again. In fact, he came, became head of the Communist Party and persecuted the church. Why? Because of one priest who didn't control his anger. And the harm he did harms many, many souls. So that's what St. Francis de Sales means Better to send a soul to purgatory by gentleness than to send them to hell by severity. So we see in the lives of the saint, St. John Bosco, in his oratory, he had to kick out a few boys out of the school. He had to kick some out for uh, bringing in filthy pictures. And, and in those days they had, they had them. Or uh, filthy language. Or um, big transgressions against the rule. He had to send them out, but he never sent them out with bitterness and anger. He always got them to see why they're being kicked out and the reason why, and they have hope to amend if, if they amend their ways. But he wasn't quick to kick boys out, and most of the time he gave them second, third chances. So another word, another uh, words of St. Francis de Sale, he says something along the lines, don't be discouraged if you fall. Don't be, if you're really, this is for souls who are really trying to be, hold, but live a holy life, trying to get out of, of, of living in mortal sin. Because if someone who lives in mortal sin a lot, they're lukewarm and they're in great danger of, of losing their soul. But these are souls who sincerely are trying to live a more holy life, live more virtuous, always to live in the state of grace. And they don't want to offend God, and they don't want to, for sure, go to hell. So, with these souls, St. Francis de Sales says, don't be discouraged if you fall and fall and fall. Get back up again. Get back up again, calmly, peacefully. And say to our Lord, Lord, I'm sorry for offending thee. Help me to do better. And make an act of contrition and get up again. And he uses the example from St. John in our, our Lord's words. Love your neighbor as yourself. With our neighbor, our Lord tells us, we must be patient and bear with their faults patiently and help them get better. By a good example first and then by words. <coughs> And if that's the case with our neighbor, we must love our neighbor as ourselves, so we must love ourselves properly. So if a soul is truly striving for holiness and sanctity, you're going to trip up and fall just because we're, we're, we're so riddled with passion and disorder from original sin and our own sins. Patiently get back up. And don't be discouraged. Just calmly get back up. These are very important words for, for good souls. Because for good souls who are really striving and they trip and fall and trip and fall and trip and fall, they can, the devil gets in there and discourages them. 
and says, well, you're just too bad, you're never going to make it, you can't get out of sin, you're too prone to sin, you're this, you're that, and never listen to those words of the devil, because God's grace can take a charcoal and form it into a diamond. His grace took a muddy, filthy pool of water into a sparkling, crystal clear water, St. Mary Magdalene, from a life of sin to a life of a saint. St. Paul, from a life of a murderer and persecutor of the church to a hero and apostle of the Gentiles. And he took St. John of God, who was one of those souls that was gambling, he was a soldier, messing with girls in a bad way, and cussing and swearing like a pig. And this was him, and he would go to confession and fall again, go to confession and fall again, go to confession and fall again. But he didn't give up. And eventually the grace of God won in him, and he truly converted, and he became a saint, and a great saint. He founded a hospital for the diseased, the homeless, and even prostitutes. And when the bishop was visiting him, because he heard rumors that he was housing prostitutes, <coughs> well, he kept them in a separate house. He brought in uh, ladies and nuns to help teach them, keep them busy with good things, knowing how to sew, how to cook, how to clean house, and give them some foundation. The bishop said to him, I hear you keep great sinners here in your house. And St. John of God said, Your Excellency, I don't know of any greater sinner than myself. And he went on his knees and he asked him to pray for him. So the bishop realized he was really a good, a good priest. So God wants to work. He wants you all to be saints. He wants a Saint Angelo out of Angelo. He wants a Saint Augustine out of Augustine. He wants a Saint Micah out of Micah. And all of you, he wants saints. And no, saints are not like waffles. You put them in and you close the waffle cooker and it comes out always the same shape. God doesn't believe in waffles. He doesn't believe in everyone being the same. And look at his creation. It's not boring at all. But each human being that he created, and imagine the millions who have been aborted and stopped by contraception, but God, you have good parents. If you're alive today after 1975 and F73 in the U.S., thank God for your parents that they're not liberals and could have aborted you or contracepted you and you wouldn't even exist. Or if you were born and conceived and then aborted, you'd be in limbo for all eternity, which is a, pl a place of natural happiness. But you'll never see the face of God. So, so St. Francis de Sale, um, he has many good words, such wise words. And he always encourages the soul, keep striving for sanctity, for holiness, patiently. And be patient mostly with ourselves, because we're the biggest problem. And our Lord says to us, Come to me, all you who labor in our burden, and I will refresh you. For my yoke is sweet and my burden is light. So always keep striving for sanctity. Never be discouraged with our sins and our falls. Never be clouded by that. As we, and look at the athletes, how many athletes, and boxers and wrestlers. Some of them get pinned over and over again, but learning through all that, they get better. And even the famous Michael Jackson, who was famous when we were growing up, the great basketball player who still holds records, some people have never beat his records, Air Jordan, he himself said, I have missed many three-pointers. I failed and lost the game over 9,000 times. I messed up games many, many times, but I persevered. And in doing that, he became the best basketball player. And that's just basketball. And they win a trophy. Now he's old. Now he can, you know, he has run camps for, for kids, which is good, and teaches them uh, basketball. That's a good thing. But now he can't play anywhere close to where he used to play. But maybe if any of us met him on the basketball court, he'd probably out play each one of us in his old age, perhaps. But so it is with holiness and sanctity and getting to heaven. You're going to fall and fail many, many, many times, and our Lord knows this, but we've got to keep striving and persevering. 
And our Lord says it. It's not those who advance far that win the crown, nor those who begin well, nor those who advance almost to the end and poop out right before the finish line. None of them win the crown. Who wins the crown? Those who persevere steadily to the end. And that's what we're here on earth for, to steadily battle in this war for, for heaven to get to heaven. And God gives us so many friends in heaven, the saints. Pray to them. You're named after saints. And let me say this as a, in open brackets. If you get married, don't give your kids these pagan names. Sloan for a girl. Morgan for a girl. Horrible names. Kaylee, Haley, Wishy-Washy, all these stupid names. Give them Catholic names. I'm getting close to the point as a priest where I'm not going to baptize any baby with some a non-Catholic name. They give sometimes uh, Catholic middle names. But give your children the saints' names. Stop this pagan practice of pagan names or worldly popular names. So give, and you kids, most of you have saints' names. And pray to them, because they, they, they are in heaven. Liam is John, St. John in Celtic. So, uh, that is a saint. So, pray to those saints that God has given you as your patrons. Close brackets. One last point from St. Saint Saint Francis de Sales. Uh, among his other sayings, is... Better to love God out of fear than to fear Him out of love. Excuse me, I got it backwards. Better to fear God out of love than to love God out of fear. This was one of his other great sayings. What's it mean? Better to fear God out of love, that we love Him as our Father, and fear Him with a filial fear. Just like you fear your dad. You love your dad, but you fear to offend him because you, you know he's going to use his, uh, his belt or his hand. Uh, but you first love him. You don't first fear him. So better to fear your father out of love for him than to love him out of fear. To love someone out of fear is a forced love. And God doesn't want a forced love. He wants a free willing, self-giving love. So we must fear God out of love. And that's a virtue, that's actually a gift of the Holy Ghost called the fear of the Lord. Where we fear the just punishments of God, if we deserve them, by offending Him. We fear His justice. But we first love Him. And that's what we must strive always to do. First, and pray for that grace, to love Him above all things. But not to love Him out of fear. Not to obey the laws of the church and the laws of God's commandments because I fear to go to hell, I fear His punishments. That's not love. So we must, we must strive to love God continually. And this was... St. Fra Francis de Sales wrote a whole treatise on the love of God. And it's worth taking the time to go through it. Sometime in your life. Because it's, it's, it's pretty heavy, but it's not, it's not complicated. And he, he talks how to love God. How, how do we love God? And one of his final sayings is, how do you learn to ride a bike? You get on the bike and you practice. And you might fall over. And you just get back up again. Same with horses. You get, you get knocked off, you get back on again. That's how you learn to ride a horse or a bike. How do you learn to swim? You swim. You practice. That's, and how do you learn to do archery? You, well, you, you get instructed how to shoot, you get instructed how to aim, and then you have to practice. And that goes with rifles and pistols. How do we learn to love God? Love God. You don't need a special book, you don't need a special teacher, you just love God. And ask that grace to love Him. And God wants to give that to us, if we ask Him.
I was telling one of you that there was an atheist couple that raised their girl, their only child, because they excluded and, and contracepted all their other children, like a lot of modern parents do, pagan parents. Anyway, this girl grew up, and she never heard of God. She never saw the sign of the cross. The parents never mentioned God. They kept God out of their house, out of their language, out of their thoughts. So they thought they were going to raise this nice, charitable atheist. Turns out the girl grew up and wrote a book and she says, my parents never mentioned God ever, but they didn't know when I was five years old, I was kneeling down praying to God. She was praying to God because God, his law is written on our hearts. We don't, you don't need to be told there's God. We know it in our whole being because his image is imprinted in us, in our intelligence in our memory, in our will. And that's a reflection, actually, of the Blessed Trinity. God the Father in our intelligence, God the Son in our memory, and God the Holy Ghost in our will, because we can love. We can love, and that's, that's an impression of the Holy Trinity in the soul. But even, even Lucifer has that. Even the damned right now in hell have all that. Because they, you can be in mortal sin and have intellect, memory, and will. And in hell and have intellect, memory, and will. But what God really wants is intellect, memory, and will, but with the state of grace. And this is what transforms us into a living temple of the Holy Trinity. Like a shining diamond in the sun, the Holy Trinity dwells in the soul. And this is what we're supposed to live as, united with God, in sanctifying grace. So the worst tragedy that can happen to any of us is not losing an arm or a leg or an eyesight or ear, hearing. Because you can save your soul if you lose these things. The worst thing is to lose the state of grace. That is the greatest treasure possible for any of us. And we, we lose grasp of these great treasures. And what does sanctifying grace do to your soul? It transforms you into the living temple of the Most Holy Trinity. St. Teresa of Avila saw her soul in the state of grace. She thought it was one of the archangels in heaven. It was so beautiful. And our Lord said, my daughter, that's your soul, because I dwell there. So this is the treasure you have, and pagans don't know about this. And we want to we want to lead pagans to know this, to convert them. But, but we must treasure these, these treasures of God. And this is the beauty of St. Francis de Sales that inspired St. John Bosco. In fact, St. John Bosco, what's the name of his order? Salesians. He named it after St. Francis de Sales. And he applied St. Francis de Sales' teaching to the boys' oratory and later the girls. So it was governed by reason. Be reasonable with the children. Don't lay down a bunch of laws that just opp oppress them and depress them. Schools easily do that. They make tons and tons and tons of laws and, and the, the school just becomes a, a, a painful prison. So St. John Bosco was, be reasonable. Have a few laws, but tell the boys they can laugh, they can sing, they can run and play, but don't sin. That was his one, other one of his sayings. Laugh, play, run around, mess around, but don't sin. And then... Uh, Reason and then kindness. Always deal kindly with whoever you live with. Some of some days, some of you may be priests. You have to deal kindly with everyone that you that you have under you. Parishioners, old ladies, old men, children, families of all sorts, the sick, and some people will try your patience very much, and you must be patient with them, and also instruct them. So, for example, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. My last confession was last week, and these are my sins. My husband did this. My husband did that. My husband this. My husband that. And wait a minute, wait, wait ma'am, isn't this your confession? <laughs> Not your husband's. And they rattle on, rattle on, rattle on about their husband's faults and sins. Well, patiently you have to instruct them, right? That's just one stupid example, but you will certainly have that as a priest. St. Philip Neri had that as a priest. So, um, great patience with souls. And if you're, a, if you're a businessman and you have workers under you, 
You don't explode on them and crush them and fire them without a, a serious reason. You have to deal reasonably and kindly with people. And if you have children and your own wife, you have to deal kindly with her. Because you're going to live with her the rest of your life. Once you make your vows, it's till death. And she's going to do things that will annoy you. She's going to do things that get under your skin and, and you want to strangle her. But you can't. And you must, especially the man, must be very patient. There's nothing more mightier than strength. But nothing more... Je nothing more gentle than a manly, gentle strength, says St. Francis de Sales also. And men are stronger. Men are built stronger. And they can take, take down a woman. Most men can. Uh, Whippy men can be beat, beat up by their wives. But uh, you deal gently and kindly with people as a rule. And this is just basic, basic virtue. But it needs to be so told, and this is what St. Francis of Sales always emphasized. But, open brackets, St. John Chrysostom says, There are times when one must be angry, and if he doesn't get angry, it's a sin. So there are times when you must be angry. Right? What's an example? When God is offended. When Christ is insulted. When I'm especially the Virgin Mary. When St. John Bosco was a boy and heard a kid insult Our Lady, he walked up to him and smashed him in the face with a right hook. So, there are times when you must be angry, but it should be a serious reason, and it should be an anger that's controlled, but justified. So, again, another common sense example. Someone is trying to break into your house, and he's got a rifle. Well... Self-defense. This is a principle of self-defense, which is part of the natural law. You can blast that guy into pieces with your rifle on, on, in your house, off the porch. You can do that. And uh, a lot of the modern governments are making it illegal to defend yourself. So that even if you try to defend yourself, you go to prison and the intruder gets, goes away scot-free. And this is, these are terrible communist uh, laws that are being implemented that take away the most basic rule of the natural law, self-defense. So if someone attacks you, you can defend yourself, unless it's for the reasons of the faith. Then you get arrested and be put to death willingly for the love of God. But you can escape it too. Our Lord says flee to the mountains when the persecutions hit. So he doesn't mean go out of the way for them, but if they come your way for reasons of the faith, you accept that. But other than that, you have self-defense, and you must defend your family. And they want to take away the Second Amendment in the United States, they're trying to, these liberals, because that's the one last bastion why they're not steamrolling the United States of America yet. But they're trying to get rid of the Second Amendment, and once they do that, then we're, we're finished. It'll be easy takeover. So... Self-defense is a basic principle. And if you don't get angry and defend your wife and children, or defend your uh, whoever you're living with or defending, that, that, could, that would be a mortal sin, to fail to defend the common good. Or if the country is unjustly attacked in a truly just war, the Catholic Church teaches, St. Thomas Aquinas teaches, you better defend your country. And the men must rise up and go to war. In a just war, it would be a sin not to defend your country if it was aggressively, unjustly attacked. So, let me add to that, we are actually in a war right now. They are attacking us. Um, we'll talk about that later. So let's now, let's pray to St. Francis de Sales and St. Jean Francois de Chantal to have his spirit of kindness, reasonableness, meekness of spirit, not prone to anger, and a great love of God, to strive always for sanctity, begging the Mother of God to grow in these great virtues. 
O Mary conceived without sin, O Mary conceived without sin, O Mary conceived without sin, and for those who do not have recourse to thee, especially all communists and Freemasons and other enemies of Holy Mother Church, and in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, Amen.